Right, so I'm delighted to be interviewing Leon Chambers, award-winning director of indie film Above the Clouds, a British coming-of-age road movie, comedy drama. Uh, today we're going to be discussing how a director works to turn the written word into a visual spectacle and what he looks for in a story. Leon, thank you for joining me. No problem, happy to be here. Um, when you see a script or story, what qualities tell you it has cinematic potential? I think it's, well, uh, the overall thing is always the actual story itself. The story arc is a really big part of it because one of the sort of issues with um, like a novel is there's so much of it to condense into a film because you're always condensing. Um, so you're really looking at the, at what the actual story is and then reimagining how, you know, I mean, I tend to be, I read something and then, you know, I see it as a film because as I'm reading it, I'm visualising and actually seeing the story myself and how I would imagine it. So I think it's it's hard to put a, to pin anything on it, but I think it, it's it's about the overall story as opposed to the detail or anything else. But it's just mainly the what is the yeah what what's the, the thrust of the thing? Um, can you tell us something about the way that you, you work with a, a screenwriter to sort of develop an idea and, and ready it for, for actually filming? Well, I tend to, um, I tend to work, you know, um, via talking and meeting with, with a writer as opposed to giving loads of notes, which is quite unusual. A lot of directors will uh, get a, a, a treatment uh, or some kind of synopsis and look at it and give notes back on that, literally written notes. I tend to do it by talking. Um, and that's, I just find that's where I can be more, uh, more helpful. And ideas come to me in conversation. So, you know, with Simon, when we were developing um, my film Above the Clouds, um, it was literally, he would write a script, I would read it, read it or you know, write a, a treatment and I would read it and then we'd sit and talk about it. And it's through that discussion that we solve and find problems and move the project forward. That's quite so a relationship in that, that sense. Yeah. I mean, I just find for me, you know, that's my, my way of, of mm. interacting and of finding that. And I find sometimes just reading it and making notes that I can't solve things. Whereas we get into a discussion about it. Um, that's where we can find some solutions. Mm. Mm. Um, Next question. So you've worked with many of the top British actors through your radio and audio work. Uh, in your opinion, what are the secrets to writing believable dialogue? <sighs> Dialogue's tricky. And I think this is, again, where, you know, a lot of people um, really sort of uh, congratulated Simon on his writing on our film was because he wrote a character of a sort of 18 year old young woman and he's a 30 something year old man. Mm. Um, and he wrote something very believable that people were kind of saying, how did you write this? This sounds like a, a young woman. Um, and he said he based it on people and everything else. But the thing is with dialogue that I think where it falls down is people don't speak correct English mm. and they don't speak in complete sentences. I mean, the amount of time someone sort of asks something and someone would go, yes, no, no, yeah, you... And they've said yes and no in that same response. But, but that's how people speak. So I think the art of dialogue is actually writing stuff that feels natural and how people would, would speak. So the fact that half sentences are there, that people stop halfway through or, or whatever. And a lot of actors, you know, a lot of actors, you know, really good actors love a great script. Because if you have a great script and it's got great dialogue, it makes their life easy because they're not having to try and work hard to make it feel believable. So you're a big fan of Hitchcock, as I well know. Mm -hmm. So what lessons um, might translate for both film and literature uh, in terms of how the master builds suspense and delivers shocks and surprises? How, how, how would you advise a writer or a filmmaker to capture that well, i think from a filmmaking point of view what hitchcock gets or got brilliantly was how powerful the mind is so his idea of of doing of suspense and everything is not to actually show the final thing not it's always to imply and let your brain fill in the gaps 
So, you know, horror movies that are all sort of very graphic and slasher type things, you know, would never be a route he would go down because he'd want your brain to do the work. And I think that relates to, you know, equally to, to writing and to novels is that, you know, you need to set stuff, stuff up that allows the audience or the reader to think. Um, and I, for me, that I think, I mean, he made, there was, there's various points he talks about. There's a very famous story. He talks about a film, Sabotage, one of his early films, where he feel, he feels he got it wrong because he blew a, bu a bus up. And you, f you follow this young man or boy or walking around with what you know is a bomb. And he gets on the bus and the bus goes up and, and people die. And there were two things from that. People were shocked when it was screened, especially in that era, 1930s, that he'd shown that. But he also thought that actually by the bomb going off, he's resolved something. So all the tension that he built up suddenly dissipated. And, you know, he could have done two things. He could have had the bomb didn't work or someone picked it up and threw it out the window and everyone saved. But, but by the bomb going off, it kind of ends it and makes it final and all the tension goes. And he later told a story about the way to do tension is, you know, you put a bomb under a table, you show a clock, you show a clock on the bomb was when it's going off and you keep playing those two things and you certainly show that the people around the table are unaware of it. So it's, it's all about, you know, what you show. So following the success of your short films, you worked on a feature film uh, and released that last year, was it, or the year before? Um, earlier this year is when it got released, yeah. So can you, can you tell, a bit about us, tell us a bit about it and uh, the success it's had? I can see some awards in the background there. <laughs> um, and, and the poster, in fact. And the poster. Um, yeah, um, well, it's, it's a story that I've had in my head for ages. And it's basically about a young woman who discovers her father's, not her biological father, um, she lives down in Kent um, and she, her parents have gone away on holiday, left her on her own and uh, she discovers they bought her a car, which they've yet to give her. Um, and she decides she wants to go on a road trip to find her real father, but she can't drive. Um, so she persuades a homeless man she's met to be her responsible adult and sit in the passenger seat so she can make this drive from um, Margate in Kent to the Isle of Skye in Scotland. So it's a kind of comedy road movie between an 18 year old woman and a homeless man, uh, Charlie and Oz. And um, yeah, so it's something we, as I've wanted to make for ages. Simon got on board as the writer and um, we got to a point where we just decided we were gonna find a way of making it. And we, got the, we shot the film in 2016, um, completed it a couple of years later. These things take time, particularly when you're working on a budget. Um, and then we, entered into festivals because film festivals for indie films is the way you get them out there and people hear about them. Um, and we were really fortunate that we actually ended up with a number of festivals all wanting the world premiere. Um, and we actually settled on the world premiere in the UK with the Raindance Film Festival, which is the biggest indie film festival in the UK. And then we played um, the American film, um, world premiere, oh, American premiere, sorry, um, at the Austin Film Festival, which is known as the Writers Film Festival. Um, it's amazing. I mean, they have a conference there and you'll meet screenwriters who've written some of the biggest movies and TV programs in the world there. It's where they, um, yeah, all the sort of screenwriters congregate. And we were fortunate we won the Audience Award there for the for best narrative feature. Um, went off, won a few number more awards. And uh, in fact, at Austin met uh, the distributor who eventually we signed the deal with. Um, and it went out um, on VOD, Video On Demand, um, worldwide, beginning of this year. Um, so it's available on Amazon and Google Play and I, iTunes and all these sort of things. I mean, in America, it's on Amazon Prime included in the, in the subscription, which is great um, when you consider there's, I think, 100 million subscribers in America. So. Uh, it's yeah it's getting out then we've got some lovely reviews and some great feedback so yeah it's out in the world and their journey continues